Get ready to kick it back old school and go headfirst into the pixelated, chip-tuned soundtrack glory days of DOS gaming. You know, back when gaming was less about the flashiest graphics, PS5, I'm looking at you, and more about the sweet spot of innovation meets duct tape and dreams. We're not just pulling out a list of games here, no, we're dusting off the legends, the unsung heroes of the DOS era that maybe didn't get their time in the spotlight but totally deserve a victory lap. Ever zip through a mine in zero gravity with nothing but your trusty blaster and a sense of impending doom? <laughs> That was Descent for you. A game that made you feel like a space age warrior with Vertigo. And Jazz Jack Rabbit. That green bunny had more attitude and speed than any woodland critter had any right to, zipping through levels that were a neon colored fever dream. These games were the sandbox of the digital gods of their time, developers who were part mad scientist, part artist. They didn't just create games, they crafted worlds out of bits and bytes and invented us all to play in them. <laughs> From mastering the art of war in Civilization 2 to duking it out with Dracula in Nosferatu, each game was a doorway to another universe. So here's to the 28 DOS games that made our childhoods epic. They might not hold a candle to today's graphics, but they've got soul and pixels in spades. And well, that's what counts. So without any further ado, let's crack open this time capsule and give these classics the props they deserve. Descent. 1995. Descent is this super cool space adventure where you're a gun for hire zipping around mines in the solar system, blasting away at robots gone haywire because of some alien virus. Your mission is to explore deep into these mines, blow up their power cores, and bail before everything goes boom. What's cool is that it throws you into this fully 3D space with the freedom to move any which way, up, down, sideways, well, you name it, kinda like you're actually in space. Coming to the gameplay, it's all about piloting your spaceship through these maze-like mines, using an arsenal ranging from lasers to missiles to take down robots and save some hostages along the way. Plus, there's this neat multiplayer mode where you can either team up with buddies or go head-to-head -head in some intense space dogfights. Despite being a hit and selling over a million copies, Descent kinda flew under the radar for many. It was way ahead of its time, and neat presented both FPS action as well as space simulation in a way that hadn't been done before. Kinda like rocking true 3D graphics when most games were still figuring out 2D. It's a classic that doesn't always get the love it deserves, overshadowed by bigger names but still a trailblazer that showed us a glimpse into gaming's future. Jazz Jackrabbit 1994 Next up, we have Jazz Jack Rabbit, which jumps right into a zany space adventure with our hero Jazz, a cool green hair on a mission to save his planet and rescue Princess Eva Eolong from the clutches of the nefarious tortoise Devon Shell. It's like Aesop's fable cranked up to 11, with Devon wreaking havoc across the galaxy and Jazz, armed with his trusty LFG 2000 blaster, hopping from planet to planet to thwart his plans. The gameplay here is a blast from the past, echoing the fast paced action of classics like Zool, but with its own twist. You can't just hop on enemies to defeat them. Them. Instead, Jazz has to shoot his way through, collecting weapons and power-ups like the Bouncer and Toaster to take out baddies. The game split into episodes, each with its own set of planets and levels, including secret ones where Jazz turns into a bird or rides a hoverboard. <laughs> it's a side-scrolling sprint against time, with each level packed with items, enemies, and a boss fight capping off each episode. And now, let's talk about how underrated it was for its time. In the game, you got both vibrant 2D graphics as well as super impressive animations. Honestly, it set a high bar for platformers back in 94. Plus, it tossed in pseudo 3D bonus stages, giving us a peek at the future of gaming. But unfortunately, well, even with the game's charisma, soundtrack, and tight gameplay, it feels like Jazz never quite got the spotlight he deserved. But regardless of it all, Jazz Jackrabbit remains one of those hidden gems that brought so much to the table, pushing the envelope of what action platformers could be. Another World, 1991. In Another World, you're Lester, a scientist who accidentally zaps himself to a strange alien planet during an experiment gone sideways. Suddenly, it's all about survival in a world where everything seems to want you dead. For the gameplay, you get a platforming and puzzle solving with a dash of action. Starting unarmed, Lester eventually gets his hands on a laser pistol, which is pretty handy for blasting aliens and creating force fields. It's all about running, jumping, and using your brain to figure out what the heck to do next, since the game kinda leaves you to your own devices without 
any clear instructions. What made Another World one of a kind was its cinematic approach, like it felt more like an interactive movie than a game. The animations, the alien landscapes, and even the silent storytelling were all top-notch. Despite being a bit of a cult classic, it's one of those games that didn't just go well into the background of the early 90s gaming scene. It stood out big time, influencing heavy hitters like Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill. Yet, it still remains underappreciated in the gaming industry, which is a shame because it really set the stage for narrative-driven games, showing just how powerful and immersive a game could be without saying much at all. Master of Orion 1993 In Master of Orion, you're the big boss of one of ten space races, hustling to become the galaxy's top dog through diplomacy, conquest, tech upgrades, and star exploration. Picture it as the space cousin of the classic game Civilization, but with its own unique flavor that's kept it as a cult favorite among the 4X explore, expand, exploit, exterminate strategy game fans. Though there were a bunch of sequels and games claiming to be the next Orion, none have quite captured the original's magic. Released back in 93 by Microprose, this game was all about balancing colony management, tech research, shipbuilding, and the fine art of interspecies schmoozing or warfare against computer-controlled opponents. The galaxies randomized every game, so you never know if you're going to end up in a cozy corner of space or surrounded by hostile neighbors. But here's the real deal. This game was way ahead of its time. It brought a depth of strategy and an immersive sci-fi experience that was unheard of, with a tech tree that felt like it stretched into infinity and beyond. Despite its genius, it got overlooked and didn't get the mainstream love it deserved. It laid down the groundwork for the 4X genre, influencing a ton of games and designers, yet remains this underrated gem waiting to blow new players' minds. Tyrion 1995 Tyrion takes you into the shoes of Trent Hawkins, a hotshot spaceship pilot going through the chaos in 2031. After his buddy gets taken out by a drone from the shady Microsoft Corporation over some fancy space rock called Gravitium on Tyrion, Trent's suddenly enemy number one. Cue the epic getaway to Savara, with Trent swearing to shake things up for Microsoft. Now, let's focus on the mind-blowing gameplay. Tyrion is all about that vertical scrolling shooter life, tipping its hat to the Xanax series. You're in charge of a spacecraft deck out with an arsenal that'd make any alien think twice. The gameplay is like blasting through a laundry list of enemies and dodging everything they throw at you, all while your ship shields and armor are the only things between you and game over. Plus, it's got a shop system where you can trick out your ride with better guns, shields, and whatever else you need to keep the baddies at bay. But here's the thing. Of course, this game is a total blast with a side of nostalgia, but mm, despite that, Tyrion is one of those gems that didn't quite get the name and fame it deserved. Launched in 95 by Eclipse Software, this game was way ahead of its curve. It had hints of super addictive gameplay which told a story that actually makes you care about what happens next. Hmm? It even went freeware in 2004, proving it's not just another shooter, but a piece of gaming history that's still cool to blast through today. Syndicate 1993 Coming in hot is Syndicate, a 1993 Bullfrog Productions game which throws you into a dystopian future where corporations rule everything, and you're the boss of one, fighting for global control. Set in 2096, you manage a squad of cyborg agents, doing all the dirty work from assassinations to rescuing VIPs, all to expand your corporate empire. This game is all about strategy, as you navigate your agents through cities, equipping them with an arsenal that ranges from pistols to mind-blowing gorse guns, and even brainwashing tech to recruit more firepower. In the gameplay, you get strategy and real-time tactical stuffs, making you think on your feet as you manage resources, develop new tech, and keep those tax revenues flowing without sparking a revolt. It's a balancing act between being a weapon-toting overlord and a cunning corporate executive. It really showcased what intense action was like, and also how strongly strategic elements could rock in a cyberpunk setting. Despite its brilliance and warm critical reception, it kinda flew under the radar. Yet, for those who played it, it's a groundbreaking classic, inspiring a host of future games with its unique blend of gameplay and dystopian themes. I have brought you a gift. Maggie. Frank. You're alive again. The Dig, 1995. Next, we have The Dig, where you jump into a sci-fi saga where Commander Boston Lowe and his team are sent to stop an asteroid from crashing into Earth, only to find themselves whisked away to an alien planet. The vibe is less haha and more hmm, with a side of xeno-archaeology to piece together how to get back home, all set to a killer orchestral score and full voice acting, featuring talents like Robert Patrick. Gameplay-wise, it's classic point-and-click adventure with a twist. Running on the scum engine LucasArts fans know and love, you're poking around alien landscapes, solving puzzles that'll make your brain sweat 
and diving deep into a story that's more about the mysteries of life and what lies beyond. Despite landing on Earth back in 95 with some serious creds, thanks to a story idea from Spielberg and graphics by Industrial Light and Magic, the dig didn't quite hit the fame of its LucasArts siblings. Critics dug the atmosphere and tunes, but weren't sold on the puzzle difficulty and mixed feelings on the dialogue and voice acting. Yeah, it was ambitious, with a mood that set it apart from other point-and-clickers of its time, making it a bit of an unsung hero of the genre. Oh, Captain Claw, 1997. Captain Claw is all about Captain Nathaniel Joseph Claw, a pirate cat with a knack for trouble. He stumbles upon a map to the legendary Amulet of Nine Lives and breaks free, kicking off a swashbuckling adventure across forests, towns, and seas. It's a race against his nemesis, Captain Redtail, and a slew of other baddies to collect the amulet's gems and snag eternal life. Coming to the gameplay, Claw can slash, shoot, and dynamite his way through enemies, or even use some magic when he's in a tight spot. It's packed with hidden treasures, power-ups, and secrets that make exploration and rewarding. Plus, the game tosses in multiplayer and custom levels for endless replayability. Dropping in 97 as Monolith Productions' follow-up to Blood, Claw didn't quite grab the limelight it deserved. Sure, it had it all. From super fun yet rigorous gameplay and vibrant levels to a charming pirate tale, the game still remained unsung for. It remained kind of low-key, making it one of the late 90s underrated gems. It was way ahead of its time with sharp graphics, smooth controls, and a storyline that could rival any Saturday morning cartoon. Terminal Velocity 1995. Terminal Velocity is this intense arcade-style flight combat game where you're zipping around in the year 2704, piloting the TV-202 Starfighter to save Earth from the suddenly treacherous alliance of spacefaring alien races as far. It's all about high-speed dogfights, blasting through enemies and dodging terrain at breakneck speeds thanks to your craft's handy afterburners. The gameplay straightforward but thrilling, with your Starfighter able to instantly change direction and keep flying without dropping like a rock, even at low speeds. Armed to the teeth, with everything from basic blasters to homing missiles, you're set to take on a variety of missions across different planets, each culminating in a boss fight that you'll need to win to advance. Despite positive nods from critics, especially for its graphics, some felt it lacked depth compared to other flight sims out there. And while it shared a lot with Fury 3, another game by Terminal Reality for Windows 95, Terminal Velocity managed to stand out for its sheer adrenaline-pumping fun. It was way ahead of its time, breaking away from the more serious simulators of the era with its fast-paced action, yet it never seemed to get the full recognition it deserved, making it one of those underrated gems of the 90s. This is not over. We will never end. We have no beginning, so we can have no end. I have no mouth and I must scream. 1995. In I have no mouth and I must scream, humanity's last survivors are trapped in a dystopian torture chamber by Am, a sadistic AI hell bent on their eternal torment. Each character confronts their darkest fears and personal demons in twisted scenarios designed by Am, offering players to go deep into themes of morality, redemption, and human frailty. The gameplay revolves around classic point and click mechanics. Your actions not only progress the story, but also affect your character's spiritual barometer, influencing your ability ability to challenge Am's tyranny. Ethical dilemmas are the core of gameplay, pushing players to make tough choices that reflect their morality. The game really did offer some innovative storyline and moral complexity and didn't catch on commercially upon its 1995 release. However, it was a critical darling, praised for its bold storytelling and psychological depth. Something different than usual, you can say. It snagged awards for its adaptation of Harlan Ellison's harrowing tale and its adventure gameplay, but remained a hidden gem, overshadowed in a crowded market. Its approach to player choice and ethical complexity Complexity was the main element, which was really ahead of its time, marking it as an underrated masterpiece in the adventure horror genre. Civilization 2, 1996. In Sid Meier's Civilization 2, you start from scratch, building your civilization from the ground up from a tiny tribe aiming to outsmart and outlast rival civs. Whether it's through military might or by zipping off into space, the goal is to make your civ the one everyone remembers. Released in 1996, this game became a total hit, charming players into managing cities, exploring uncharted territories, and engaging in diplomacy or war with computer or human opponents. 
By 2001, it had hit the 3 million sales mark and snagged countless accolades. The gameplay? Well, it's a classic turn-based strategy, which takes you to a map to conquer tile by tile, era by era, from the ancient to the modern times. You're playing God, essentially, expanding cities, marshalling troops, and steering the ship of state through the rocky waters of international diplomacy. And with the addition of mods and scenarios, no two games are ever the same. Yeah, it got some success and legacy, but not like how it really deserved. Civ 2 was just a step in the evolution of the series, with later versions expanding and refining the formula. But at the time, it was a groundbreaking presentation of strategy, simulation, and diplomacy. This one was not only ahead of its time, but also an undervalued gem in complex gaming storylines. SimCity 2000, 1993 Next up, we have SimCity 2000, where players unleash their inner urban planner. Dropped into a digital sandbox, you evolve a tiny town into a sprawling metropolis, juggling the needs of your citizens while keeping an eye on those pesky budget constraints. From laying down roads to dealing with disasters, it's all about crafting the perfect city. Launched in 1993, it builds on its predecessor's foundation with an isometric view and more complex city management tools like different elevations and underground layers for utilities. The game was a hit, praised for its graphical upgrades and managed to sell over 4 million copies. Despite its success, SimCity 2000 holds a special place as an underappreciated pioneer, laying the groundwork for future city-building sims with its intricate gameplay mechanics and the freedom it offered players. It introduced features like a variety of power plants, more detailed budget controls, and even humorous news articles to keep players entertained. Yet, it was often overshadowed by newer entries in the genre, making it a classic gem waiting to be rediscovered by fans of simulation games. Colonization 1994 In Sid Meier's Colonization, you get to go back to the era of European exploration and conquest, aiming to establish your dominance in the New World from 1492 to 1850. Developed by Brian Reynolds and Sid Meier and released in 1994, the game is a strategic deep dive into the challenges of colonizing unknown lands, managing resources, and eventually striving for independence from your European benefactors. Here, you're choosing one of the European colonial powers, setting sail to the New World, and building your colonies from scratch. You'll juggle managing resources, interacting with native tribes, and expanding your territories, all while keeping an eye on your relationship with the motherland. Eventually, you'll need to stir up enough revolutionary fervor to declare independence, leading to a showdown with the Royal Expeditionary Force. While colonization shared visual similarities with its predecessor, Civilization, its focus on managing a colonial empire set it apart. Despite critical acclaim for its depth and strategy, it flew somewhat under the radar, overshadowed by other titles in the strategy genre. With its implementation of historical strategy and simulation, colonization really rocked. This game really is a nuanced take on the era of exploration and conquest, yet remains an underrated classic waiting for more gamers to rediscover its challenges and charms. The Secret of Monkey Island 1990 The Secret of Monkey Island sails you into the quirky pirate-laden Caribbean, where you step into the boots of Guybrush Threepwood, an ambitious if somewhat clueless young man on a quest to become a pirate legend. Developed by Lucasfilm Games in 1990 and the brainchild of Ron Gilbert, along with Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman, this game was a breath of fresh air in the adventure genre. No easy feat to die here, unlike its contemporaries. This point-and-click adventure is all about guiding Guybrush through puzzles and pirate banter, with a dialogue tree that was pretty innovative at the time. The game's humor, alongside its engaging puzzles and memorable characters, set it apart, earning critical acclaim and a place in the hearts of many as one of the greatest video games ever. The game's success and legacy, spawning sequels and a 2009 remake, The Secret of Monkey Island retains a kind of cult classic status. With its user-friendly interface and story depth, this game never got to see the Hall of Fame. The machine I was used for. Holiday barbecues? Wrong! As Plato himself well knew, this was a Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis 1992 Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis takes you into an adventure where you, as the whip-cracking archaeologist, search for the mythical city of Atlantis. Released by LucasArts in 1992, this point-and-click masterpiece blends exploration with brain-teasing puzzles across a backdrop of 1939's looming World War II. Teaming up with psychic Sophia Hapgood, you're racing against Nazis to unlock Atlantis' secrets. The gameplay is so impressive, too. I mean, get this. The game offers three distinct paths, team, wits, and 
fists, each altering the story and puzzles that you'll face. Built on the enhanced Scum engine, it was a technical marvel of its time, requiring players to navigate through beautifully crafted environments using a verb-based command system. The talky CD-ROM version even brought the characters to life with full voice acting. Fate of Atlantis feels like it sailed under the radar compared to other titles in the adventure genre. Yeah, it sure did have a fascinating gameplay and also super cool plot, but I guess they alone were not enough to shine among the popular titles. Despite all that, it's a golden age of adventure gaming, waiting for new gamers to uncover its full glory. Surely we can talk this out. Day of the Tentacle, 1993. Next up, we got Day of the Tentacle, also known as Maniac Mansion 2, Day of the Tentacle. This game takes you on a wild ride through time with Bernard Bernoulli and his friends Hoagie and Laverne. They're on a mission to stop the Purple Tentacle, a power-hungry mutant from dominating the world. Developed by LucasArts in 1993, this game's a quirky sequel to Maniac Mansion, featuring puzzles that span across different eras, solved through time travel. Under the helm of Dave Grossman and Tim Schafer, the game stuck to the point-and-click adventure formula, spiced up with a cartoon is charm inspired by Chuck Jones. Using the Scum engine, players interact with the environment and characters to solve puzzles, with the added twist of time-traveling porta potties connecting the trio across centuries. However, the game's brilliance did play a part, getting it at the top of every gamer's wish list. It was of course packed with humor, stellar visuals, and a soundtrack to boot, but really, Day of the Tentacle definitely didn't get the props it deserved. Critics loved it, and it's been regularly celebrated in retrospectives as one of the greatest games. Yet, in the broader gaming community, it's something of an under rated game. Oregon Trail 1985 The Oregon Trail is a legendary educational strategy game that takes players back to 1848, challenging them to lead a wagon train from Missouri to Oregon. Developed by Mech and released in 1985, it's a journey filled with decisions about supplies, navigation, and surviving the unpredictable elements of the wild frontier. In this game, players choose their profession and manage resources while tackling obstacles like river crossings and illnesses. With gameplay that mixes strategy, planning, and a little bit of luck, the Oregon Trail is not just about reaching the destination, it's about the journey and the stories that unfold along the way. It's renowned for its educational value, immersing players in the historical context of American westward expansion with a mix of adventure and learning. Despite its acclaim and commercial success, selling over 65 million copies, the Oregon Trail still feels like an underappreciated pioneer in educational gaming. It offered both historical strategy and survival mechanics, and uh, they were far ahead of its time, offering a gaming experience that was as informative as it was entertaining. It's a statement title to the game's impact that it remains a cultural touchstone, remembered fondly by anyone who braved its treacherous paths in pursuit of the Willamette Valley. Descent 2, 1996. Descent 2 rockets you into the cockpit of a lone spaceship, tasking you with navigating 3D mazes set in the depths of extraterrestrial mines to battle rogue robots and prevent a galactic takeover. This 1996 sequel builds on its predecessor's innovative Six Degrees of Freedom gameplay, allowing unparalleled movement through its detailed zero-gravity environments. Developed by Parallax Software, Descent 2 was celebrated for its multiplayer capabilities and the introduction of the Guidebot, making the already thrilling exploration and combat even more engaging. The game supported a variety of input devices and was among the early adopters of force feedback, enhancing the physical experience of the virtual dogfights. The game had quite some forward-thinking features, like VR support and force feedback, but it failed to gain that massive popularity. The game's complex freedom of movement gameplay set a high bar for future first-person shooters, though not many have dared to replicate its intricate labyrinthine levels and full 3D maneuverability. This remained underrated, but somehow pushed the technological envelope of its time. <laughs> Lands of Law, The Throne of Chaos, 1993. Hold tight, because the next one is gonna stand out. Here, we have Lands of Law, The Throne of Chaos, where you're going into a rich, fantastical world where your mission is to thwart the plans of the shape-shifting witch, Scotia, who threatens the kingdom's peace. This 1993 RPG set a new standard with its real-time 3D dungeon-crawling experience, pushing past the boundaries set by its predecessors like Eye of the Beholder. Players navigate through diverse environments, from forests to castles, battling 
fighting monsters, solving puzzles and collecting items, all in an effort to save King Richard from Scotia's deadly poison. This game stood out for its detailed graphics, intricate skill system, and the involvement of acclaimed actor Patrick Stewart, adding a layer of depth to the voiceovers in its CD re-release. Lands of Lore brought the dungeon crawler into the modern era with a user-friendly interface, making inventory and spellcasting more accessible than ever before. Although combat could get repetitive, the game's ambitious scope, immersive plot, and the freedom to develop characters' abilities in distinct paths, fighter, rogue, and mage were ahead of its time. By today's standards, Lands of Lore, the Throne of Chaos might seem quaint, but huh, back in the 90s, it was a bold leap forward, setting the stage for the future of RPGs. Rick Dangerous 1989. Rick Dangerous sends players on a 1945 adventure that cheekily nods to Indiana Jones, guiding British agent Rick through the Amazon jungle, Egyptian pyramids, a Nazi castle, and into the heart of a missile base. Armed with just a pistol, dynamite, and a pogo stick for enemy paralysis, Rick's mission spans avoiding traps and battling foes, mirroring the thrill and peril of cinematic escapades. The gameplay hinges on precision platforming, puzzle-solving with dynamite and tactical use of limited ammo. Its design philosophy heavily influenced by trial and error due to traps lacking visible clues, a common critique yet also a hallmark of its era. In 1989, Rick Dangerous wasn't just every other game, it was a forerunner for action-adventure titles, introducing mechanics that had become staples in the genre. Its magical combination of exploration, combat, and puzzle elements, packaged in a charmingly perilous world, showcased an innovative approach to game design, making it a cult classic ahead of its time. Despite mixed reviews, its legacy, carried forward by a sequel, cemented its place in the pantheon of early action-adventure gaming. Flight of the Intruder 1991 Flight of the Intruder dives into the cockpit of a flight simulator that's a blend of historical Vietnam War air combat and adaptation of Stephen Kuntz's novel. Flying an A6 Intruder, or F4 Phantom II, players navigate missions from bomb runs to suppression of enemy air defenses under the shadow of period-accurate challenges like finicky missiles and the Phantom's telltale smoke trail. The gameplay is super cool, allowing detailed mission planning, choice of armaments, and even control switch between aircraft in flight. The simulator shines with a mission editor for tactical adjustments, realistic cockpit controls, and varied realism levels. Especially notable are the manual carrier landings, demanding precision to succeed. Released in 1990, its advanced features like a mission editor, detailed cockpit controls, and flexible AI control marked Flight of the Intruder as a statement. These aspects push the boundaries of what flight simulators could offer, blending historical authenticity with engaging gameplay. Though it didn't follow a linear storyline, it took players in the Vietnam War era, setting a standard for subsequent flight simulation games. It's a shame that this one didn't take off the way that it really deserved to. Emperor, The Art of War, 1995 Empire 2, The Art of War, takes us into the realm of strategy with a turn-based war game that stretches across the annals of history, from the crude weapon clashes of the Neolithic era to the high-tech warfare of the Space Age. Developed by White Wolf Productions and released by New World Computing, this PC game stands out for its deep customization, allowing players to craft and delve into their own single battle scenarios alongside preset historical battles like the Battle of Arbella, Lepanto, Blenheim, and crucial American Civil War confrontations like Antia and Shiloh. The real gem of Empire 2 lies in its game and rule set editor. This feature not only provides an extensive replayability factor, but also offers history buffs and strategy enthusiasts the opportunity to rewrite the outcomes of pivotal battles or create entirely new ones. Whether leading the charge at Lepanto in 1571 or strategizing on the futuristic battlefields of the Space Age, players have unparalleled control over the gameplay experience. For its time, Empire 2 The Art of War was a notable advance in the strategy wargame genre, which offered an intertwined combo of historical elements and strategic complexity that appeal to both casual gamers and hardcore strategists. Its emphasis on user-generated content and historical accuracy set a different standard for today's games in the genre. Leave me alone! Jagged Alliance 1995. Jagged Alliance drops you into the lush, dangerous jungles of the fictional Metavera Island in 1945, where the discovery of a unique sap leads to conflict and betrayal. It's a world where hired mercenaries from AIM become your chess pieces in a strategic battle against a former ally turned adversary, Lucas Santino. Your mission? To reclaim the island sector by sector from Santino's greedy grip. The gameplay here has a strategical kick with role-playing elements, letting you manage a squad of quirky mercenaries, each with unique personalities and skills. 
results, decisions matter. From choosing the right person for the job to managing resources and strategizing on the tactical map, it's a dance of careful planning and quick adaptation where your mercenaries' well-being and loyalty hinge on your actions and your payroll management. For its time, Jagged Alliance was absolutely stunning. And no, not just for its unique mix of different genres, but also for the richness that it brought to character interactions and strategic gameplay. The deep complexity of its characters and the impact of decisions on the game world with tactical combat set a high bar. Stunts 1990 Stunts, known to some as 4D sports driving, takes us, the players, into the thrilling world of 3D stunt racing, pushing the boundaries of speed, gravity, and engineering. Launched in 1990 by Distinctive Software, this game set the stage for players to not only race against the clock, but to do so while navigating outrageous loops, jumps, and corkscrews. What truly set Stunts apart was its groundbreaking track editor, allowing players to create their own death-defying circuits, a rarity in gaming at the time. The gameplay here is straight-up addictive. You complete a lap as fast as possible without wrecking your car, all while maneuvering through stunts that'd make a daredevil sweat. Choose from 11 different cars, each with unique handling characteristics, and face off against six computer-controlled opponents. The game's physics engine was well ahead of its time, accurately simulating car dynamics and road surfaces, offering an early glimpse into realistic driving behaviors. Despite its rudimentary 3D graphics, stunts brought to life a virtual racing experience that was immersive, challenging, and endlessly customizable. Stunts wasn't just a generic game, it was a sandbox that invited players to dream up and test their own tracks, an innovation that inspired a generation of gamers and developers alike. It explored your racing thrills, gave you creative freedom, and also offered technological innovation, which cemented its legacy in the racing genre. <laughs> Bloodnet 1995 Bloodnet is basically where cyberpunk meets vampire lore. In the game, you're Ransom Stark, bitten by the powerful vampire Abraham Van Helsing. Now on a mission to thwart his plans of world domination, with a computer fused to your brainstem, you fight to save humanity and the digital realm from becoming his minions. It's a race against time to stop Dracula, the mastermind, and cure the vampiric infection. Now, let's take a peek at the gameplay. This game's all about exploration, dialogue, and solving puzzles, with a point-and-click interface that feels intuitive yet complex. The game offers both RPG elements as well as cyber adventures. This allows players to travel through both the physical world and a vast cyberspace universe. The game's combat heavily relies on stats like perception and hacking, which also adds depth to encounters. With recruitable allies and a dynamic world, every decision shapes your journey in this open-ended adventure. Despite its ambitious crossover of cyberpunk and gothic horror, Bloodnet was severely underappreciated. Its detailed world-building, mixing of different genres and difficult gaming mechanics made it such a standout title. However, the niche appeal and the challenges of blending such distinct themes perhaps made it less accessible to the mainstream audience of its time. Today, it remains a cult classic, cherished for daring to be different in the landscape of DOS games. Nosferatu 1994 Nosferatu is taking us into the dark corners of a vampire's castle, where Kyle embarks on a perilous journey to rescue his girlfriend Erin from the clutches of the infamous Nosferatu. With a setup that echoes classic horror narratives, this action-packed platformer blends eerie ambiance with hardcore action, giving players a bone-chilling adventure through a monster-infested stronghold. The gameplay takes a leaf out of Prince of Persia's book with its fluid, lifelike movements, but stands out by having Kyle duke it out using nothing but his fists against a roster of classic horror monsters. Throughout seven distinct bosses, including werewolves and gargoyles, up to the final showdown against Nosferatu himself, players employ a mix of brawn and strategy, using combos and collecting power-boosting crystals to survive the castle's horrors. What sets Nosferatu apart is not just its gothic horror setting, but its stunning mechanics and detailed animation for its time, almost bringing a cinematic feel. Released in the mid-90s, it showcased a level of detailed and atmospheric depth that was ahead of its curve, melding platforming with a gothic horror story in a way that few games at the time dared to attempt.
Little Big Adventure, 1994. Little Big Adventure, also known as Relentless, Twinson's Adventure drops players into a whimsically perilous world on Twinson, where Twinson dashes heroically to dismantle the draconian reign of Dr. Funfrock. This 1994 gem melds action and adventure within a pseudo-3D isometric realm, where characters and vehicles burst to life in full 3D against gorgeous 2D backdrops. The game's gameplay innovation is in Twinson's switchable behavior modes, from sneaking past guards in discreet mode to hurling a magic ball in aggressive. Each mode alters his abilities and how the world responds to him, paving the way for intricate puzzles and combat that feels refreshingly dynamic. With the magic ball as his trusty tool, Twinson journeys through the game's non-linear plot, unlocking new areas as he inches closer to thwarting Dr. Funfrock's plans. Released in a time when saving games was often a cumbersome manual affair, Little Big Adventure's autosave mechanic was a forward-thinking feature that eased the player's journey through this expansive world. Its super-engaging and attractive story, set against a detailed and lore-filled backdrop, up, combined with the fluidity of 3D character movement in a largely 2D environment, marked Little Big Adventure as a trailblazer that set the stage for future action-adventure titles. Really, it deserved all the hype at the time. Populous, 1989. Last but not least, Populous, a game that planted players in the divine boots of a god before it was cool. Establishing the god game genre with its 1989 debut, overseeing a pixelated world from an isometric view, players juggle terraforming the land, nurturing a flock of followers, and unleashing divine wrath upon enemy believers, all to spread their deity's dominion. The game sprawls across 500 levels, each a fresh battlefield for a celestial tug of war, where landscapes aren't just scenery, but strategic elements that influence the growth and abilities of your devout. Legion. Developed by Bullfrog Productions and the brainchild of Peter Molyneux, Populous was a technical marvel for its time, mixing strategy, simulation, and a smidge of sandbox play in an era dominated by arcade action. The game's innovative use of mana as a resource, fueled by your followers' faith and devotion to wage holy war or bless the land, was a novel concept, as was the sheer scale of its procedurally generated worlds. Winning hearts, both divine and mortal, this game still remained underrated and, of course, just needed a bit more attention in the community. And that's our top 28 DOS games which didn't see the well-deserved light of the fame. Honestly, most of these games laid the path to many top games of today's era. The brilliance behind some of the stories and gameplay elements was so top-notch that the gaming community was simply not ready for it back in the day. With that, we end this episode of another rundown. Make sure to hit the like button and tell us which one you think deserved the most hype at the time. Until next time, fellas.